How's it going there, everyone? It's Mr. Zen over here with a brand new discussion for today, folks. And for today's segment, I'm going to be talking about Taboo Tattoo, another highly anticipated summer 2016 anime for all you young folks out there. And now this anime, guys, when I actually first watched it, it was pretty interesting in itself. The fights were interesting. The animation was pretty interesting. The soundtrack was pretty interesting. You know, everything about it was interesting. But the story... Now that's where it kind of went, like, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. That's where it kind of stopped me right there. Because in all, in all the aspect of the whole anime itself, it's really, ex it's being executed very well. I love, love like, what the studio has done for this, and it's actually doing very well. But it's just that the story in itself has just been, I feel like it's just been executed so many times by other animes that it's just like the same cliche storyline over and over again. That's what personally it felt like to me for Taboo Tattoo. Now, the reason I say this is because the fact that the way that it was being executed, it was kind of like as if the anime was trying to like make itself seem original in, its, in, in a sense, but it was kind of like throwing it off balance at the same time too by trying to be original. Because there was a couple scenes that I was kind of questioning as to how, to how all of a sudden this character just came out. Oh, why, why is this happening? Or why is the main character now so special? Like I said, like, it's just, like, it just kind of gave me, the, like, it just gave me some questions to wonder, like, wh what are they trying to say in this part of the scene? You know, it's just, like I said, it's just, it just feels very cliche in itself. There's a lot of tropes that are used in this, in this anime itself. But nonetheless, so the action scenes are really what really, what will really grab any viewer in itself. The animated scenes and battle scenes are all very done very well, and I congratulate the Asuda for what they've done. And it's, you know, they're doing top-notch work here. But it's just like I said, just the, the story in itself, it just feels like it's just written over and over done. Like, I, that's what kind of didn't really intrigue me, was just the, just the story. The, the action, yes, it did catch my eye, and I was, I was actually, one, like, watching it over, I'm like, oh, snap, did this, did this really happen here? But, other than that, story just feels so cliche. Sorry about that, guys. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, but it's just that the story just doesn't really seem to be catching on to me. I mean, like, to me, to my honest opinion, even when the opening title was being shown, there was a lot of females, female characters portrayed in this anime that apparently are going to be the main cast of it. And I feel like, oh my, I, I'm here thinking like, oh, this is going to be another harem anime right there. And so I can tell this main character is not going to go after all. He's going to, he's going to brush off all those women. And only go for one woman, but all those women want him. That, that's the way I was gonna be looking at this anime, cause I'm like wondering, like, oh my god, man, what? What? I thought this was gonna be like a very special anime in itself, but no, I was just a little bit disappointed in itself as to how it was being portrayed a little bit. But like I said, folks, if you guys want to watch something very entertaining for the summer 2016, you guys want to watch some very battle action sequence, kind of like a blockbuster movie, you know, kind of in a sense right there, you know, and watch Taboo Tattoo if you just don't care about the story. <laughs> in my honest opinion, like, if you just don't care about the story, I just watch Taboo Tattoo. Because the way they're kind of portraying was the main character, Akatsuka Justice, he is just like another TV trope in itself, you know, he's a He's a high school kid who has a, not a very ignorant looking life, but just that, you know, he's he's trying to be a very passionate person who's who's trying to look on, you know, on the positive side of things on life. But, you know, he saves an, a, an old homeless guy. He's a martial artist. Ooh, interesting, right? But while he was saving this homeless guy, this homeless guy gives him a supernatural power. And he, and he doesn't know what the supernatural power does. And throughout the whole entire episode, he was kind of trying to understand what this this tattoo you could say that it, it kind of imprinted itself on his arm was was it about now they didn't really explain too much as to what the tattoo powers can do until the end of the episode and that's where they were actually starting the show started to be a little bit more interesting because the beginning it like i said it was kind of like weird how they kind of introduced all like the characters like he's just like a martial artist and everything like they, you know like it's just the way they kind of portrayed didn't really kind of catch my eye it was kind of like, if you just jumped right into the heat of battle and you're just wondering, okay, you're trying to catch up to, like, as if the story was already being, like, it was already going and you're here wondering, okay, let me, uh, let me try to collect the, the my thoughts and say, okay, let me try to put these puzzle pieces together. You know, that, that's how I kind of was going along with this kind of anime. 
But once you, then you start collecting pieces, you're like, oh, okay, never mind. I can already tell what's going on in the next... You can already kind of foreshadow as to what's going to happen in the next scene. And also the anime intro and ending kind of foreshadow as to what the, the powers can do. Now, keep in mind, folks, I've never seen this manga or anime. And I can already tell that it kind of reminds you of Naruto in a sense. Because of the fact that the main character is going to be part of these characters called the Sealed. Where the tattoo has like some kind of special powers and all the tattoos have different powers in itself. And it, from the looks of it, from the anime intro ending, there's like some kind of beast within that tattoo. Now that, okay, I was like, okay, that reminds me a lot about Naruto. Like, oh, okay, you know, another thing that's been done over and over again. Some beast trapped within the person's body. Okay, let's see what goes along more with this. And then the ma the main, another main character called Izzy, where she works for like a like some kind of agency where she's trying to, I would say, collect the tattoos that were stolen from America. Yes, folks, America is actually brought into this anime in itself. And that was actually kind of caught me interested. Like, oh, okay, you know, America. Huh. Not so many anime kind of involve America in itself and, J and Japan. It's like Japan and Amer America are, are kind of going like in a, kind of like in a feudal war, like an arms war, I could you could kind of say. And these tattoos are going to, like, kind of, I want to say bring balance to the force. You could kind of say it's more along that as, as to it, it would kind of help uh, with the kingdom against uh, the opposite kingdom in itself. And that's what kind of it's kind of like a, basically it's a political it's also a political anime in itself, as you can kind of kind of clearly see because of the same fact that these tattoos are, are powerhouses that will help control this political economy into a better shape. A shaping world as you kind of clearly see but like i said there's a little bit more detail as to like as, as the later later the episode gets into itself but like but like i said just like the story just feels like just just cliche you know the tv tropes and everything oh and the main character izzy like i said she she seems like like when she's introduced she seems like a the sun deer right there she's very hardcore cold very very kind of distant from the main character all of a sudden she's like all of a sudden she's cute friendly cuddly i'm like oh come on guys really really like i'm here wondering next to why are you even doing this like oh my god this is kind of it's kind of cringy a little bit as to like in some certain scenes they're just a little cringy like it did like there are certain scenes where some certain parts didn't really need to be fitted in the episode like where izzy was kind of being showcased as like a cute girl where with the, with the coffee thing it, it just kind of felt like like it was out of place like oh okay she's like she's a very serious character but when it comes to coffee or hot things she acts like a cute little kitty i'm like oh, oh, okay apparently hot things is makes this makes this character seem weak now or normal as you kind of say but like i said and then you have the, uh, another supporting character named tom where he's introduced where He's kind of seen as a kind of like the you could kind of say the mellow down character. He kind of seems very anxious. You know, he's a comical spoof character. He's he's not very seen as a very serious person. He tries to be very serious in itself, but nonetheless, no. That when I was kind of watching him, he just kind of seemed like an idiot to be honest. And then later on in the episode, we kind of get more involved as to what the tattoo, like I said, it was the tattoo's powers, like they're being showcased. And then there's a, a mobster from Los Angeles that is involved in it. And then that's where it kind of started throwing me off. Like, it's just another fight within, it was like three fights within the episode. I'm like, I was thinking, like, this is clearly an action-based anime. That's all it is. Like, there's three fights. The first fight was between Izzy and Ak Akatsuka. And then the, the second fight was basically him. Well, actually, the I'm sorry. The first fight was was Akatsuka against like these like thugs. Then it was the second fight, Akatsuka versus Izzy. And then the final fight was this thug from Los Angeles versus Akatsuka. And like I said, like it's just very action paced. Like it's like three fights in one episode. It literally, the episode did feel long in a sense because of that. There's a lot going on. But like I said, it's just I don't know. It just didn't really click on that much to me. It's just a story. It just feels like, uh, just doesn't feel very natural to me. But folks, let me know what you guys think about the episode down in the comments below. What was your favorite part of the anime? Did you guys find it as cliche as how I actually found it to be? What do you guys think of the of Theodore's taboo power? Because you know, that part I kind of didn't really understand in itself as to how his tattoo got triggered. What do you guys think of the main character, Izzy? Do you guys think she's a Sundeer? Because I personally think she's a Sundeer right, right now. That's how I'm looking at this character. But nonetheless, folks, still entertaining anime to watch. If you guys want to watch it for a summer anime, 
go ahead and, and just, you know, download it or watch it wherever you can. Very interesting itself right there. But, like I said, the story didn't really click on me that, that much, as in my opinion. But, like I said, folks, that's it for this episode. You know, give a like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoy my content. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out. <laughs>